Yeah, so uh, yesterday, while we were at the Passover, uh, Elder Pastor brought up this video, and we, uh, we watched a little bit of it. You know, um, Sarnetta interviewed this guy who calls himself Commanding General Yohanna, and a question about the Passover and how it should be kept came up. And I'm going to play that part of the clip in this video. But before I begin, let me start by saying all praises and glory is due to Yahweh Bashim Yahshai Bashim Rakakwadash for giving us this knowledge, this truth, this understanding. So yesterday we had our Passover and there was a few of us brothers and um, it was a beautiful Passover. I had a good time and I didn't have to sing. I didn't have to dance. All right. I was just in the presence of brothers, real brothers in the faith that I came up with. Okay. And, um, you know, that's all I got to say on that, you know, and then, uh, watching, uh, the different groups, GMS groups and their Passover Pretty much it was the same thing. We all had a solemn assembly, as it should be. Um, and um, that's according to the scriptures, you know. There's a scripture where it says, the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, you know, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. Now, these scriptures are supposed to make us wise unto salvation. So we know the most important thing right now is not mirth. You know, we'll, we'll really enjoy ourselves in the kingdom, you know. But for now, we're in a state of mourning. We're in the house of mourning. And, you know, you got a lot of Israelites that just don't understand that. They think it's, you know, like that song IUIC put out, it's an Israelite party. That's what they think this thing of ours is about. Just one big party. You coming in, you coming in into this ministry to have a good time. Brothers, the scriptures tell us, man. And this is why it's so important to have good, solid, good teachers that are filled with the Holy Spirit to teach you correctly. Brothers, the, the scriptures tell us when we come to serve the Lord, prepare our minds for what? For mourning, for for catching hell, for being persecuted. Let's read it. Um, the book of Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus, the second chapter. You know, it doesn't tell us when we come into this ministry to get ready to have a good time. Bear with me for a minute. This thing froze on me. Here we go. Uh, Ecclesiasticus 2 and 1, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Where in the scriptures does it say when we come to serve the Lord, we've been called, right? And, and hopefully chosen, but we've been called right now. Where does it say get ready to have a good time when you're being called into this thing? It doesn't say that, man. You know? Right now, we, we, we suffer and we mourn, but in the kingdom, we're going we're gonna to rejoice and have a good time. And that's where you want to have a good time. You can't have no good time here in hell. What sense does it make? Even Solomon said that. I said of mirth, that it's madness. What sense does it make? You're going to be jumping up and down and dancing and making a fool out of yourself. And the very next day, you're in hell. The very next day, you got to go to work. Probably go to work with a goddamn hangover. Feeling like S-H-I-T. Listen, brothers, we're going to, when we party, right, when we have a good time, I'm, I have nothing against having a good time and partying, but we're going to do it the right way. Okay, that's going to be in the kingdom. All right. That's when we're going to have a real good party and a real good time. Ain't no good time here, man. The thing we should prepare our minds for is all kind of hell and all kind of uh, judgments being brought down, man. Okay, that's what we got to prepare our minds for. Anyway, again, Ecclesiasticus 2 
and 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy, set thy heart aright. A lot, of, a lot of these dudes in Israel, their heart is not set aright. Their mind is not set aright. Because they're not receiving the right kind of information. Okay? Like I said, and I'll say it again, a lot of these guys think that is that becoming a Hebrew Israelite is just one big party. You know? <laughs> it says, set thy heart aright, meaning our minds, and constantly endure. And that's why a lot of guys fall off, because they were not given the right information when they came in. The scriptures speak about counting the costs, whether you have enough to finish it, finish the work, because you don't get the prize unless you finish the work. So you, when you come in, you got to come in with the right mindset. So just maybe you label, you, you're able to finish the work because you got the right information when you first came in. Oh, so this is not a, a party ride. Oh, this is a, a thing of suffering. Oh, okay, so I got to prepare my mind to suffer. Oh, okay, I understand that. Okay, our Lord suffered. Okay, I got to suffer too. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll just deal with it. Like Micah said, I'll bear the indignation of the Lord. Oh, that's why I'm suffering because I sinned against the Lord. I got to pay for my sins. Oh, okay. A lot of guys are not receiving that kind of information, man. You know, they're, they're coming into Israel and they're seeing all this superficial nonsense. You know, they, they you, wear this, you wear the nice garments and you, you wear these uh, armbands that look like you, you, you're on a biblical movie set, Conan the Barbarian. You know, that's what they're teaching these guys. You know, they're not teaching them what this truth is really all about, which is at the end of the day, it's all about suffering. Okay, it's all about suffering righteously and suffering for righteousness. That's what it's about, man. Anyway, this is why the scripture says, set thy heart, set our hearts aright and constantly endure. Endure what? The sufferings we're going to go through in this ministry, in this truth, whatever it may be. Sufferings in your body, sufferings in your mind, sufferings in general, sufferings from your family, suffering, sufferings from your children, sufferings on your job. <laughs> Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Because trouble is going to come our way, man. Trouble is going to come our way, brothers. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Yeah. So at our last end, that's when we're going to party. That's when we're going to have a good time. After the job is done. Right now, we got a job to do, man. And there's no way in the job where it says... Thou shalt have a good time. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Thou shalt party on the job. <laughs> Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. There you go. Does that sound like, like when you come into this thing, you're going to have a good time? Does that sound like that? No, it doesn't. Okay? And this, this is one of the first scriptures that I learned when I first came into this knowledge and this truth. And it really stuck with me. Okay? Because, because of the power of it. This is what this ministry is all about. It's about suffering. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Again, suffering. For gold is tried in the fire. What is the fire? Adversity. Whatever it may be, man. Your car keeps breaking down on you. Okay. Um, you, you, you got all kind of demons on your job messing with you. You're about to lose the damn job. Okay, you know, as soon as you step out your house, you can feel those those negative forces coming at you, those spirits coming at you. That's what this thing of ours is about, brothers. Okay, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. What did the Apostle Paul told Timothy? Endure hardness as a good soldier. <clears throat> okay, believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside, lest ye fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him and your reward shall not fail. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Okay, so if you want to get a good idea of what this thing, this ministry is all about, a good start would be Ecclesiasticus, the second chapter, also known as Sirach. To read the scripture, 
with, with understanding. Okay? There's nowhere in these verses where it says, Thou shall have a good time. All right? So, <clears throat> that being said, let's talk about the Passover. Because that, that topic was brought up by this phony, phony baloney commanding general, which that's nothing but a cult of personality. There's no scripture where Yahweh Shai set up a commanding general. All right? <laughs> a commanding general of what? What, what? what battlefield has this guy been on to make him a commanding general? All right? <laughs> that's, that's like cosmetic jewelry, man. It does, that, that title doesn't mean anything. It's a cult of personality, man, that, that simple-minded Israelites follow. Okay? That guy created that commanding general. All right, it goes back to the old school where they had a ranking system, but that, it was just for that, ranking. But in reality, the Heavenly Father, through his only begotten son, didn't set up no general. What the Heavenly Father did set up is a priest. This is a priesthood, okay? Like we have a title, elder apostle. Yes, we're elders, okay, because we've been in the faith according to the law, an elder is a guy who's been in the faith for more than 25 years. He's an elder. Uh, elder Apostle Tar certainly qualifies for that. He's been in the faith more than 25 years. I myself, we qualify. I qualify for that. Uh, I've been in the faith more than 25 years. Uh, Apostle Elder Ramlab, more than 25 years. The elders of, uh, of um, Connecticut, okay, more than 25 years. So they certainly qualify to be an elder according to the law okay according to the law all right and the word apostle just means sent away so there's no cult of personality with our titles elder apostle but now with this commanding general now that's a cult of personality show me one scripture where the lord set up in this priesthood he set up generals <laughs> he set up Je yahweh shai when i say the lord i'm talking about yahweh shai Show me where he set up generals to go out and teach the word. When he set up the, the uh, disciples, which was his disciples, which became apostles, which one of them was a general, huh? So this is folly, man, commanding general. And Yohanan is not even a Hebrew name. It's Yawakanan. Yawakanan. That's the correct Hebrew, Hebrew name. Not Yohan. There's no such thing as Yohanan. That's not Hebrew. Okay, so this guy all around is fake. And when I first joined the, the, the ministry, when I first joined the faith many years ago, I was in his camp, okay? And I saw right through that guy way back then. I said, this guy ain't serious. He was hardly at the camp, okay? He's always been about making money, going from one making money scheme to the next. That's, that's what he's always been about, and that's just the truth. His motivation is money, man. His motivation ain't the truth. That's why he got guys under him in his group that is, that is teaching all kind of madness. He got one guy that's teaching that John the Baptist fell out the truth. Okay, so this guy is a hireling, man. He doesn't care. If he really cared about the, the gospel and cared about the truth, he would straighten out his men. As soon as they went off in their doctrine, he'd be right on them. Just like the scriptures say, reprove and rebuke. That's what we're supposed to do. You hear a guy go off, you hear a guy teaching something that's not sound, that's not the truth, you're supposed to get on him and correct him. This guy doesn't do that. Like I said, he got a guy t right now teaching that John the Baptist fell out the truth. The same guy said, if I say John the Baptist is a, a, is a plate of fish, pass me the hot sauce. All kind of madness, man. So this guy... This, this, Anyone who follows this guy, well, like Yahweh Shai, he said it best. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into a ditch. Just like the Lord said, his people are foolish. They are sottish children. That's why you would follow a clown like this, commanding General Yohanna. The whole title is fake. The, it, come on, man. Come on, please. Stop it. <laughs> All right? Anyway, what I'm going to do is... Uh, play some of this video here from Sarnetta and they're going to talk about the Passover and I'm going to examine that what was said 
according to the scriptures and that'll be the video hopefully it's edifying to you brothers and a few sisters that watch these videos so without further ado let's jump into it recognize that this can only be done one way and so that's the reason you see some people do that and then some people also still believe in following the so-called jew you have a lot of people that believe that he's the real jew and that he's who we should follow which is a complete lie because he stole our identity and our records and you know it's ridiculous for us to follow his way of life <laughs> hey, one thing i'll say about this so-called commanding general general johanna he is entertaining that he is he should have been a politician man truth be told but a true man of the lord a true teacher of this gospel a true teacher of this of this truth daddy ain't okay now is he entertaining oh yeah he's entertaining he'll entertain you that's for, that's that's for sure have you laughing have you will have a good time with him but if you truly want to learn the gospel you truly want to learn this truth you'll be lost okay this guy this so-called commanding general didn't even know what the term sabaoth meant those of you brothers might have seen it when when the when he uh, broke down the the meaning of sabaoth lord he's lord of the sabbath that ain't what it mean sabaoth means lord of troops lord of armies that's how that's how that's the heavenly father you know lord of armies lord of troops that's what sabaoth mean this guy didn't even know what sabaoth meant okay anyway let's move on your organization believe in christ and the gospels some hebrews say you should have corrected sarnetta right there he should have said well first of all his name is not in sarnetta you should know this you've been around as Hebrews so long, you should know that his name is not Christ. This so-called commanding general should have corrected him right there. Said, look, his name is not Christ. Okay. And he should have gone into the word. Actually, the Greek word there would be Christos. Now, it's clear that our Lord was not Greek. Hebrews 7 and 14, the scriptures tell us our Lord came out the tribe of Judah. Now, the tribe of Judah predominantly spoke what? Hebrew. So, to, so we, uh, to show respect to the Lord, we call him by his Hebrew name, his correct name, which would be Yahweh Shai. Did you, did you hear him correct, Sarneda? No, you didn't. Okay, because it's all about him. It's all about himself. He's not there to represent the gospel. But let's move on. He's not there to represent the truth. We celebrate the Passover with music, wine, laughter, and during the festiv festivities, you are going against Christ. According to Matthew 26, you, you can celebrate the Passover of wine. Okay, he said music, wine, laughter. We laughed at, yesterday at the Passover, we were laughing. I myself was laughing. I, I had a good time. I was around brothers who I care, generally care about. All right, and I had a good time. But what we are saying is some guys are taking it, taking it they're superfluous with it or superfluous, however you say it. They're doing things that are unnecessary. The rapping is unnecessary. And then some guys are taking the Passover. And like I said in the video I did, they look at it as, an, as a night at Club Spanky. Okay? They look at it as a, a, as, a, as a night at the nightclub. And that's showing lack of, of respect to the Passover. The first Passover was a night of terror. Yahweh Shai's Passover was a night of terror. So we're showing respect to the Passover, okay? And the some solemnity of it, okay? 2932, and according to the term solemn assembly, assembly, solemn assembly. Right. Yeah, um, so um, can you right. please clarify for us if they are all ISUPK are all wrong? Are ISUPK are wrong? And and um dealing with the Passover, okay. The music I don't and know all the why stuff. anybody would believe that the uh you're not supposed to celebrate during the Passover when it says it's a holy convocation. And what a holy convocation is is a holy gathering. It means that people who believe in the Lord and are serious about the Lord come together as one, which is what we do, and. It's ridiculous to think that you cannot drink 
during that high holy day. No one, well, we didn't say that. We didn't say you can't drink. A, st a staple of the Passover is drinking wine. Okay? That's a staple of the Passover. Even Yahweh Shai drank wine. The scriptures tell you that Yahweh Shai was a wine bibber. Okay? Matter of fact, let's bring in the scripture here. Because the wine represents Yahushua's doctrine. All right, so this is the book of Mark 14 and 22. And as they did eat, Yahushua took bread. And this was unleavened bread. He took bread and blessed. And this is at the Passover and break it and gave it to them and said take eat this is my body and he took the cup and when he had given thanks now what was in the cup what was in the cup was wine and he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and they all drank of it and he said unto them this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many now let's keep reading to prove that it was wine. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine. What is the fruit of the vine? The wine. Vino. Okay? Like the, the Latin slash Italian word for wine is vino. Il vino. The wine. Right? Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of the Heavenly Father. And, and, and by the way, that's going to be the ultimate party. How about that? <laughs> that's the kind of party I want to be involved in. A party with Yahweh Shai. So how about that? So yeah, I'll wait. Okay. My mentality is to wait. That's when we're really going to party. When we party with Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is telling us right there that when he comes back, we're going to be drinking wine with him. Okay, let's read it again. Mark 14 and 25. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine. So that proves right there what they were drinking in that cup was wine. At his Passover more than 2,000 years ago, right? Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of the Heavenly Father. And that's what we're waiting for. And then you see the next verse, and when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. So yeah, they sung, they sung a hymn, which is really the psalm. And that's probably what they did. Not probably, that's what they did. One of the psalms they recited, because the word psalm means song. All right? And that was the entertainment that they had. It was all in a, in a solemn it was all in a solemn manner, a serious manner. Because why? Why do we know it was a solemn manner, a serious manner? Because the very next day, our Lord would be crucified. And our Lord knew this. Our Lord was getting ready to endure all kind of excruciating pain, man. And um, not just pain, um, be made fun of. Humility. Our Lord was getting ready to be extremely humiliated. Okay? along with the pain that he was getting ready to suffer and endure and the shame of being on the cross. <laughs> Do these guys keep that in mind with, the, with their Passover? No, they don't. They don't think about that. They just see the Passover as just one big party. Okay? Anyway, let's get back to the video. Of course you can drink dirt. Is that, your, is that you or is that me? No, that's you. That's you, brother. Oh, that's me? Oh, damn. I didn't even realize it. My bad. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, it sir. It played on cue. I didn't even. I didn't, it, it, it came in on time too. It was good. <laughs> I didn't. Even, I thought you were playing it. My bad. Mm. Um, um, it's ridiculous to think that it's not a celebration. Once again, these are a lot of things that come from the white Jews. Okay, everybody knows. But is the white Jews? What is this guy talking about? But it's a solemn. There's such a thing as a solemn feast. It's a serious feast. And and, and when you look up the word solemn. One of the synonyms of solemn is dignified. We we had a what we had last night was a dignified Passover. Let's look at the word dignified. That's a good word. Because that's one of the synonyms of solemn. Dignify. Alright. Here we go. Dignify. It says make something seem worthy and impressive. Okay, so they don't, well, here we go. Let's look at the synonyms. Honor. So we honor the Sabbath by respecting it, right? We honor the Sabbath. Well, the, the Passover is what I meant to say. The Sabbath too, but the Passover. We, um, we honor the Passover by respecting it, okay? First, we, we understand what, it, what happened at the Passover, all right, and especially Yahweh Shai's Passover, and we show respect to it. We're mainly looking at Yahweh Shai's Passover because some of these Israelites, they bring up the Passover of Josiah. But Josiah, like I said, and I'll say it again, Josiah wasn't the most spiritual guy in the world. Matter of fact, in the very chapter, it speaks about Josiah's Passover. I think that's 2 Chronicles, the 35th chapter, if I, if I remember correctly. In the very same chapter, Josiah was put to death for being carnal, for not being spiritual. So, you know, re I really don't want to hear about Josiah's Passover. I'm looking at Yahweh Shai's Passover and the solemnity of it. That's what I'm looking at. And that's what we mimicked. We mimicked uh, yesterday, you know, at our Passover. You know, did we laugh? Yeah. Did we uh, uh, um, enjoy ourselves? Yes, we did. But we kept it dignified. Now, what you're about to see with these other Israelite groups, you're not going to see a dignified Passover. What you're going to see is a night at Club Spanky. That's what you're going to see. You watch when they put up their videos of, of them at the Passover, dancing and rapping and acting a fool, man. You know, honor, grace, uh, and noble. Okay. Dignified, man. And that's one of the synonyms of solemn. Let's bring up solemn. Solemn. See? Formal and dignified. And we looked up the word dignify. not cheerful or smiling serious and the majority of the time at the passover we were serious did we crack a joke or two absolutely like i said i was laughing i cracked a joke or two but overall our passover was solemn it was serious okay and we we discussed a lot of serious topics man especially the first part of our of our, our the passover the Passover class, which is part of the Passover, is part of our ritual. We have the class, then we have the Passover. Our class, we were mostly talking about what? The, the coming hell that's coming upon the planet Earth, the prophecies. Okay? We weren't rapping, singing, and dancing, man. <laughs> uh, characterized by deep sincerity. That's all part of being solemn. Okay? So by now you should get the point. Let's get back to the video. Oh, is that the, one of the cornerstones of black people, Latinos and Native Indians, is our music. What is he talking about, black people? What is he talking about, black people? That's another thing with this guy. Yeah, he's wearing black. This guy's obsessed with black. 
And we're not black. We're different shades of brown. And not every Israelite is going to look like a so-called black person. <sighs> Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. The Heavenly Father has set up guys like this. To lead guys that he don't want. To lead guys that are not part of the elect. A, a, a real member of the elect of the nation of Israel will see right through that guy and avoid him like a plague. Okay? As it is written, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. These guys create cult of, cult of personalities and they deceive the simple. Like the scriptures say, the, the, the heart of the, uh, how's it go? The, the simple believe of every word. So a simple-minded Israelite will believe everything this guy says. But a member of the elect that has the acumen, that has discernment, he'll see right through this clown and avoid him like a plague, man. You better believe it, man. Let's move on. You understand? Number two, Christ drank wine at what, the Passover. What, what, what was he talking it's about? What is he talking about, Christ? Who's Christ? Christ? Is that his name, Christ? <laughs> it's a holy celebration, Okay. Of course, people dance and sing and do all that, and that's all in the scriptures. The scriptures. Well, we didn't, we didn't dance. They sung a hymn. I read the scripture. They did sing a hymn, but we didn't dance at the. They, <laughs> we didn't dance at our Passover. Okay. See, see, he's bringing that in to justify what they're about to do. Okay. Basically, have a good time and act a fool. It said that King David danced so hard his pants fell off. Nothing wrong against dancing. There's nothing wrong against dancing. But did King David dance at the Passover? <laughs> and why is he bringing up King David? Like I said, we're looking at Yahweh Shai's Passover. Did Yahweh Shai get up and dance at his Passover? It's not in the scriptures. Did the apostles or the disciples, which became apostles, did they dance at Yahweh Shai's Passover? No, they didn't. As a matter of fact, at Yahweh Shai's Passover, that Passover, right, he um, he revealed who, who the traitor was, which was Judas Iscariot. And you could have cut the tension with an axe, okay? At Yahweh Shai's Passover, he said he was exceeding sorrowful. He told his disciples that. Let's read it. So the last thing he was doing was dancing. But again, like I told you, this guy is not there to represent the truth. He's there to make money. Like the scriptures say, the, the, the hireling teach for what? They teach for hire. Okay? He's there to fill his own belly. That's what he's there for. And he's also there spiritually to lead guys who are not part of the elect. Like I said, if you're if you're a real member of the elect, you're going to see right through that guy. The guy who calls himself Commanding General Yohanan. First of all, you'll see right through his phony-ass title. His cos cosmetic title. <laughs> um, bear with me for a minute. Here it is right here. Now, this is at the Passover. Let's see if our Lord was dancing. Matthew... I'm sorry, Mark 14 and 33. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John and began to be so amazed and to be very heavy. This is at the Passover. This is on Passover night because this is when they went to Gethsemane. And I always go into the word Gethsemane, which means oil press. Our Lord was the oil being pressed down in the spirit. He was not dancing at his Passover. This is why we have respect to the Lord's Passover and we try to when we try to keep our Passover like the Lord kept his okay and they came to a place which was named Gethsemane which means oil press and he said to his disciples sit ye here while I while I shall pray and he taketh with him Peter and James and John and began to be so amazed and very heavy and he said unto them my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Because indeed the very next day he would have been put to death. Okay. So no he was not dancing. At his Passover. And we show respect to that. 
and saith unto him, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible that hour or the hour might pass from him. Yeah, what he was about to suffer, what he was about to endure, the shame, the humility. So no, he was not dancing, man. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the video. So, you know what I mean? So to, 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 to take on those notions, a lot of people just don't understand the scriptures. They don't. Yeah, like you. You don't understand the scriptures. Like I said, you didn't even know what the word Sabaoth meant. Let's get uh, the book of Ecclesiastes 7. If you, if he, if commanding general is Yohanna, right? That's what he calls himself. If he really understood the scriptures, he wouldn't have that title, commanding general Yohanna. He would have got rid of that title. What did Yahweh Shai say? He that exalteth himself shall be a base, right? Is that not written? With a title like that, commanding general Yohanna, you're exalting yourself. That's not a title of humility. The scriptures speak about humility. Now, when we're being called elder apostle, that's not an exorbitant title, elder apostle. We are elders and we are apostles. The word apostle, if people knew the meaning of their words, the word apostle just means sent away. That's all it means. It's from the Latin meaning sent away. I'm sorry, from the Greek, ap apostolos, sent away. There's nothing exorbitant about our title. But then you hear commanding general Yohanna, which Yohanna is not even Hebrew. It's Yawakanan. Anyway. Ecclesiastes 7. Like I said, if you're a member of the elect and you have the acumen and you have the discernment, you can see right through that guy, man. And just keep keep it moving. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and 3. You know what? No. Let's start at 2. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. Now, the majority of Israelites in this thing that don't understand this ministry of ours, they rather go to the house of feasting. Everything with them is a party. A party here, party here, party over there. You know Jake loves to party. I don't have anything against partying. My thing is we party in the right time. Okay, we ain't in the time of partying right now. Remember what is written in Ezekiel, right? Should we then make mirth? The slayer is upon us. The slayer is Esau. <clears throat> and he's upon us. Should we then make mirth? That's clearly written. Okay? Let's get it. Ecclesiastes. I'm sorry. I got Ecclesiastes on the, on the brain. Ezekiel 21 and 10, is it? I think it's 10. Yeah. 21. Well, 21 and 8. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, say a sword. The sword is sharpened. This, the sword is being sharpened right now. Esau's sword. And remember, that's his blessing. He's getting all the legislation in place. He's getting all his New World Order armies in place. So when, when the hour of martial law is, 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 is upon us, man, those armies are going to go buck wild. All right, these devils are going to go buck wild. Remember what is written in Revelation, the devil coming down with great wrath, knowing that he have but a short time. Brothers, we are in that time now. The last thing you want to do is have a party mentality. A lot of these Israelites are going to lose their life because they're in a party mentality. All they can think about is some goddamn party, okay? I don't want to be around a guy like that. I don't want a guy like that around me. I want individuals that are that have a serious that are serious minded, that are solemn, okay, and and know what time period they're in, okay? As it is written, uh, redeeming the time for the days of evil, okay? Like the scripture says. Anyway, son of man, prophesy and say, thus saith the Lord, say a sword, a sword is sharp, and it is and also furbish. Yeah, he saw showing his sword, man. It is sharpened to make a saw slaughter. <laughs> it is sharpened to make a saw slaughter. That's what we're about to see, a saw slaughter. It is furbish that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth? What is mirth, people? What is mirth? Let's look at the, the, the Hebrew word for mirth there. Should we then make mirth? The script the scripture is asking a question. Okay, the, the Hebrew word there is uh sawas or sawas. 
right? It says to exalt, rejoice. To exalt, display joy as in party. Okay? At, see, to be bright, cheerful. Okay? Should we then make mirth? The slayer is upon us, which is Esau. He getting ready to set up his so-called New World Order in blood. One of the slogans of the New World Order is expect no mercy. If you don't believe me, get the, the, the uh, documentary uh, by Linda Thompson, America Under Siege. All right. Get the documentary. You can find it on YouTube by Linda Thompson. It's called America Under Siege. One of the slogans of the New World Order is expect no mercy. The symbol of the New World Order is on the back of the dollar bill, the pyramid with the all seeing eye. That's what we're approaching, fast approaching the New World Order. Okay, that's what it's all about. And one of their slogans is expect no mercy. So they're going to send out their goons. They're going to send out their Gestapo. They're going to send out their different New World Order uh, 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 groups, military groups. And a lot of Jakes are going to be killed. It is sharpened to make a saw slaughter. Is that not what we read? It is sharpened to make a saw slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth? The answer is no. So let's get back to Ecclesiastes 7. That's why it says, It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, because we're not in the time of feasting. The scriptures say, Redeeming the, the days, or redeeming the time for the days of evil. That then to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men. And the living, that's members of the elect, that, that have the acumen, that have the Holy Spirit, that have the discernment, that have the truth. It says the living will lay it to his heart. He'll think about it. You say, you know what, man? I'm not in the time of partying. All right. What the hell am I partying for? When the very next day I'm in hell. Okay. No, I'll wait till the kingdom. Then I can really party. I can really have a good time. Plus, I'm not really in this knowledge to have a good time. I'm in this knowledge to suffer and to pay for my sins, the, the, my, the sins of my past and the sins that I, I've, I've done before I came into the faith, before Yahweh Shem Shah showed me grace. That's the way you're supposed to think in this ministry. If you're going to think, a lot of guys don't think, man. Thinking is, is not a Jake standpoint or strong point, thinking, okay? Ecclesiastes 7 and 2, this is why these videos like this is good, because it gets you to think, think the right way. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. <laughs> How do you get around that? For that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. Sorrow is better than laughter. Sorrow is better than laughter. Sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better, meaning the mind, okay? The heart of the wise, the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth, and many an Israelite is in the heart of, is in the house of mirth, all right? Many an Israelite is in the house of mirth. Again, it says, it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. And that's what you're hearing from this guy. The song of fools. Let's listen some more. They full of, you know, either the white man's philosophy or some. Okay. A lot of people really want. I don't know what this guy is talking about. The so-called white man, he loves it when Jake is in that party mentality. Because he knows Jake ain't woken up. What really gets the so-called white man, uh, what really scares him is when they see a Jake with a serious countenance. When they see a Jake... In, in a serious posture. Now they're wondering, what does this guy know? Does he know how badly he's being fucked by us so-called white people? <laughs> is that what he's that is that what he's med meditating on? That's why he has such a serious countenance. That's what they be thinking, these devils. So I don't know what this guy is talking about. To take away this. That's the problem with Jake. Jake party too much. That's the problem with a nigga. A nigga parties too much, man. That's why he, he's a big joke. Nobody takes him seriously, especially a so-called white man. So what is this guy talking about? Spirit of black people. They want to take away mm -hmm. your joy mm -hmm. in our... In black people. What joy? Our, you know, our uh, up, upliftment. Take what, what is he talking What joy? What upliftment? We're on the bottom. 
What joy, man? What is this guy talking about? The way our spirit of celebration. A lot of people don't want... What are we celebrating? We're in hell. This is why Solomon said, I said of... of oh, how does he say it? Solomon said this. I said of mirth. I hope I can find it. Wait a minute. It might be. No. Let me just put of mirth. Celebrate. You hear what this... You see? This guy's not representing the truth. The truth is we're in hell, man. The truth is we're brought in this ministry to suffer, man. There it is right here. Oh, yeah, this is it. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 2 and 2. I said of laughter, it is mad. And of mirth, what doeth it? Okay? It's folly to... to to be in, in, a, in such a joyful spirit, especially in the time we're in. When I say a joyful spirit, meaning, a, 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 you know, laughing like a, a, a happy clown, you know? Brothers, we're not clowns, man. We're serious-minded men, okay? They want us to come up. So they want to take, they want to strip us naked. A lot of religions are like that. And a lot of religions are like that for a good reason. A lot of other religions are like that because they need to control their people. And then another thing I noticed, right, when I was watching this video, the majority of what Pastor was watching, I was watching it as he was watching it on the computer. This guy didn't bring out no scripture. It was like, in my mind, I was like, where's the scriptures? To justify the, the babble he was saying, the psycho babble. <laughs> now, some of what he's saying is true, but, but it was clouded with psycho babble. This guy talking about the upliftment and the joy. Brothers, we in hell, man. The scriptures say, uh, uh, how's it go? Um, Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. The more you understand you're being oppressed in this society, the more madder you get. The last thing you feel like doing is acting a fool and dancing and being a clown. You see? The heathens need to be controlled. Or they'll murder and kill and burn down the world. Oh, yeah, I had enough, all right. So hopefully you brothers were edified. Again, if you're a member of the elect, if you have discernment, if you have the acumen, if above all, if you have the Holy Spirit working with you, you can see right through this clown, okay? And you notice, right, with all the shit he was talking, no scriptures were brought out. This guy doesn't represent the scriptures, all right? Truth be told, he really don't even know the scriptures, Okay? So just something for you to meditate on. Anyway, on to the next video. Hopefully you were edified.